What if I told you that black people coming to the United States were not slaves at first? In fact, the colonies were well established and well into their whatever they were doing before slavery even started. And I mean, black people were here from the beginning just like the white people. They were here on the CRISPR Columbus's boat. In fact, they had one of their ships was all black. I want you to keep that in mind, and I want you to answer this question. Why did slavery in the United States actually start? And it's a basic question. It's not all of this other stuff. It's due to the stupidity of white people and a very basic thing. Just like the news treats you as dumb children based on very basic, easy to understand things. Keep this in mind. There are only 45 million black people in the United States. You have to go through eight people to get to a black person. Does that put a lot of the propaganda into perspective? And we have black people getting on the news, on TV. And what do I mean by that? That means that if the nightly news are going to feature four people in any of their features, you would have to wait two days to see a black person, let's say they were doing everything mathematically and logically and going uh, by the population density and so forth and so on, you would have to wait three days before you saw a black person on TV. That's if they even featured black people. What do I mean by all this? We're one of the rarest people in the U.S. We should never be seen. It doesn't make any sense. The only group smaller than us are the Jews. And you have to break down Asians by country to compare them to us. Now then, why are we targeted so much to be in the public eye? Why? You could fit all the black people into two big cities. Now imagine that. The thousands of other cities empty of black people. That's how few of us there are. Do you under, do you, do you, does that put it all into perspective? You could divide up the entire population of black Americans into New York and LA and no other city would have a black person in it. In the, in all of the U.S., given those numbers, why are black people on the TV? Why are black people in movies? When you get down to the, to the rare populations, in the United States, they're not on TV, they're not in movies, they're not in commercials. This whole inclusion thing is a, is a big fat lie. Because when you get down to under 10% of the population, you don't see those people. Now, have you answered why you think slavery started? Slavery actually started because of white people. Oh, I don't mean because they wanted slaves. I mean because a white person felt that he had had enough. He felt entitled to all of the, the rights and privileges that the other white people had. What am I talking about? I'm talking about indentured servants. Black people came to the United States, or some black people, I'm sorry, there were still free, free, rich black people, my family's one of them, that came to the United States, never had a problem, never had to work for anybody else, blah, 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 so forth and so on. The United States was not the big bastion of slavery that everybody wants to think that it was. Now the colonies were well established and then they had a rebellion of the indentured servants. Now, if you're not wearing a uniform, if you don't have something tattooed on your face and you're a white person rebelling against a white person, how is the other white person going to tell you from Adam? It drove the citizens crazy. So how did they fix it? They fixed it by, you could not come here as an indentured servant anymore. And they then pegged black people because black people were involved in the revolt and said they are easy to detect. From henceforth, they are slaves. And the very first ownership of a slave for life started then 
Oh, you didn't understand. Yeah, you weren't a slave for life. There was no such thing. There was no such concept before. You weren't a slave for life. And in fact, a lot of people who, who scholars, who, who, you know, they talk about African slavery, uh, Middle Eastern slavery, European slave. There was no such thing as slave for life until then. All you have to do is read African history to know, to understand that one tribe went and got another tribe and uh, they won the war, uh, not by fighting because Africans didn't fight until Shaka Zulu, not by fighting. They just uh, growled and roared and uh, beat on their shields. It was a really big ceremony. And then they would come, they would capture the, the uh, other tribe and absorb them into their tribe this was this is unheard of in europe in europe europe sla they slaughter all the men they slaughter all the boy children rape the i mean it's just i mean it's just barbaric but in africa they absorbed the tribe so what does that mean that means that the people that they quote unquote conquered became their family and yes they would have to work at first probably no more than everybody else had to work i mean it's it's africa you have to work <laughs> there's nobody city S such a thing didn't come about until europeans came along there was no such thing as i'm gonna sit on my butt and all of y'all gonna br no no the quote-unquote kings of africa they worked just right along everybody else there was no such thing as an elite class in africa and this is probably what's what's the real problem in the black community today because we do not recognize an elite class we do record we do not recognize that there is a human that just because he's born can sit on his butt my family's rich my grandmother would would friggin <laughs> flay my skin off if i if i stayed in the bed beyond seven o'clock six o'clock <laughs> so funny <laughs> I was staying with her one time when I was an adult and she came into the room. It is seven o'clock. Are you going to sleep in the bed all day? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, there, <laughs> we have nothing to do here. Nothing. Literally nothing. There's nothing. To do. You don't have a farm. You don't have anything. You just have a nice little brick house with a lawn. That's it. There, there's no, and you're retired. What? Are you, why are you waking up at seven or six? No, she woke up at like four or five. I don't know. Whatever, whatever the crack of dawn was. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, there was no elite class that sat on their butt. Not in Africa. When they absorbed this other tribe, uh, they would capture them and they would absorb them into the into the into the first tribe. It wasn't until the white man came along and introduced this whole weird class system and that, oh, you you have to do for this person and that person doesn't work and this person works that's that's a weird concept i mean it's just isn't think about it isn't that a strange concept that's a very stupid concept and it's not until the creation of the job that you can really have people sit around and do nothing what do i mean that, that means that somebody through their ingenuity can create a business that affords them the ability to pay for personal assistance personal servants you're paying them. It's a job to be somebody's servant. And the black community really needs to recognize class because we're operating like on, on a completely different system. We're, we're still trying to operate on this tribal system where everybody pitches it. And that is not the United States of America. I know there are a bunch of hippie white people who come onto my channel and say, oh, you need to just give into the village and whatever. Go away. I'm talking reality. I'm not talking about La La Land. Black people need to recognize class and they need to recognize that there is in fact an elite class out there. It's called the leisure class. These are people who do not work ever. They're children. They're children's children. None of them. The leisure class. They have invented something and leased it out and it makes so much money that nobody in their family will ever have to work because they've just made some, and they're not Jews. What's funny, I heard, I heard a Jewish man speaking on the radio, and he says, as much as the Jews want to claim ownership and they want to insinuate themselves into Harvard and all the Ivy Leagues and so forth, and so on, they're not smart. 
they're not in uh, Phi Beta Gamma. They're they're not in that in in that stuff. They're just not. There are white boys who just run circles around them. We're talking about regular white boys, not the white Jews. So what was the question? What was the answer to the question that I posed at the beginning? Why did slavery start? Because black people are readily visible to any white idiot. That's it. That's the that's the whole crux of everything. Shay's Rebellion, the white people were driven crazy because the white indentured servants rebelled and they could not tell them apart from the regular people. There was no serf versus lord and the lord is walking around in velvet coats and the women are walking around in, in uh, silk petticoats and in frilly dresses and the peasants are walking around in, in potato sacks. No. Everybody wore the same exact thing in those days. You just happen to be John, son of Mark, and you are an indentured servant, and you work the field along with all the other uh, black indentured servants. But after the rebellion, they targeted black people, and they said, oh, we knew black people, though. We could see them because they're black. Their skin is black. We can identify them. And from that then on, there was slavery in the United States. They were very pissed off about that. <laughs> they, were, they were very, very angry over over black black people and white people daring to, but more so black people daring to. There wasn't a second class citizen either. You, you did your indentured servitude. You, you you do it. You paid it off, and then boom, you're fine. You're fine. You're good to go. There was nobody who was going to stop you on the street and say, "Oh, you're black. You're a slave." No. No such thing. Didn't happen until after the rebellion. And then they just poured it on and poured it on and poured it on and poured it. Well, they found out that black people wouldn't do absolutely anything to them for calling them a slave or capturing them. They, they went to town. I couldn't be a slave back in those days. I would have I would have killed everybody I could have gotten my hands on. Everybody. No, absolutely not. No. I, I would have been just a statistic. Oh, that that slave died. Immediately, he got he got he got onto the boat and killed the captain, the crew, everybody. The only person he saved was the navigator, and he tied him to the wheel, and they fed him by spoon. And when he got off the ship, he killed everybody on the dock. Yeah, that's how that would have gone down. I've been in situations not unlike that. Remember, a part of being a diplomat isn't that you sit around doing nothing. A part of it is that you're a target. And I said before, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kidnapped in America. So yeah, that's how that all went down. And that's why black people continue to be on the TV and movies and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. There's not that many of us. And I really wanted to give you these numbers, 45 million, so you could understand how ridiculous it is when somebody says there are more black people who... No, whatever's going to come out of their mouth is a lie. 45 million. Cut that in half and that's women. Cut that by 60% and those are children. You got those numbers in your head? So 22 minus 60% and those are black men. They even lie about the one in three black men. There is no one in three black men. No, no, impossible. 80% of black people are middle and upper class. 80% of black people are middle and upper class. There is no 30% black criminals. Sorry. They measure criminality by one in 100,000. That's across the board. Asians, Jews, white people, black people. One out of 100,000 population. Now you do the math on that. And they don't want to tell you that the majority of the prison population is now white, pure pure white people from Europe, and Spanish. That's the overwhelming majority. And depending on the prison that you go to, you'll find a white majority or a Hispanic majority. It's been on the decline for a long time, this whole uh, let's arrest black people and throw them in jail as quickly as possible and for as long as possible. It's been on the decline, but nobody wants to come out of it. It doesn't sell books. It doesn't sell movies. It doesn't sell TV shows. You can't 
you can't go on CNN and call black people a bunch of criminals and, and thugs, which is a euphemism for nigger. Oh, that thug. It's a euphemism for nigger. That's what they're, they're saying this right in front of you. 80% of black people are middle and upper class. That leaves 20% of black people, right? And I already told you the real criminal population in the black community is only 8%. And what, why is it 8%? Because we're including people who are on parole, people who are on probation, people who are on the DUI house arrest and stuff like that. 8%. That means 92% of black people don't do anything against the law. They don't get shot by the police. They don't run around shooting anybody. They don't do drugs. 8%. And that's everybody in, in trouble with the law in the black community. 8%. Think about it. Black people are the majority of, that's a stone cold lie. There's only 45 million black people in the United States. They, we can't do anything that's more than. There's people who say, oh, black people are busting welfare apart. What? There are more white women on welfare than there are black people in the United States. There's more than 45 million white women on welfare. Shall I repeat that? There are more than 45 million white women on welfare. And I won't even talk about food stamps. Jesus Christ. There's probably what? A hundred something crazy? 140 million? 150 million on food stamps? What are black people in jail for? That's what you have to ask. Don't just, don't just give me a number. I'll tell you what they're in there for. 75% of black people in jail are there for simple marijuana possession. That's it. They didn't kill anybody. They didn't rape anybody. They didn't have any hate crimes. They didn't kill white people. Nothing. When you look at the data, when you finally look at the data and then you look into the data, you see that it is nowhere near the stuff that they try. And, oh, oh, there's more black people who commit violent crimes. No, there aren't. Try again. Rape is a white thing. Murder is a white thing. Burglary is a white thing. Home invasion, white thing. Mass shooting, white thing. Those are all white things. White, not Asian, not Hispanic, white. Yes, they consider all of the, they break everything up into races. Even if you try and break up the Hispanics or, or you don't want to break up and you want to keep the Hispanics as a separate group, although it's not a race, there are black people in Cuba. There are black people in Puerto Rico, black, almost pure black. So they can't be this homogenous group. They just happen to speak Spanish or Spanglish Cuban. I speak Spanish, so you can't tell me that a Mexican speaks Spanish or a Cuban speaks Spanish because I can't understand them half the time. It's it's not Spanish. It's whatever the that country made up for Spanish. I don't I don't get it. I, and I'm not talking about they they don't say vosotros. I'm saying they don't speak Spanish. I don't know what it is. Puerto Rican? I can't even. No, I don't have no idea. It's not Spanish. So then if you break up the Hispanic group in by race, then you really you throw the entire whole black black or this out of the window because really uh, then the white population grows tremendously. There are only 45 million black people in the United States. That's a tiny group. Stop saying black people are the cause of anything. If we were that powerful. I'd be running the world. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show.